back with another video on how to build your vintage wardrobe. Um, video number one was about all of the different vintage styles that you have to choose from and helping you figure out what time period or style fit your personality best. And video number two was all about buying said clothing. So it talked about the most important things you need to know about vintage, which are measurements and fit because you can get the cutest thing ever and if it does not fit your body nicely, you're not gonna wanna wear it and you're not gonna enjoy it. So after those two videos, which I'm hoping you've already watched, um, I'm just gonna assume that you are actually out there and you are looking for those vintage pieces that make your heart go pitter patter. But maybe you're having a little difficulty, you're unsure about some things. So in the video today, I'm gonna talk to you about three things. I'm gonna talk to you about versatility, price, and condition and they're all important to think about when you're out there shopping. Um, first off we're going to talk about versatility and I have examples to show you of everything. So and a lot of these things are wrinkled because they were already put up for the season. So here are two wool skirts and I, these are both true vintage. Um, one of them is the 1960s, one of them is the 1950s and I actually found both of these at Goodwill which is like my shopper's paradise. I think skirts there are four dollars or something so always always look at your thrift shops first even if you want true vintage because you can be surprised there so here are these two skirts they're both wool winter skirts and uh, this one is a, a lovely circle skirt and it is it is the definition of versatility I can put this on and I can wear every single sweater in my closet with it no matter the color red burgundy pink green navy blue whatever it looks fantastic with this add a scarf add a pin colored tights whatever this is a workhorse so this is just a fantastic skirt and I wear it all the time so uh, co solid color separates that you can buy like this that are rugged and hard-working they are so worth your money if you can find them thrifted, great. If you had to pay full price for this on eBay or something, you're going to get the wear out of it, so it's worth it. Now we come to this one, and I think it is so cute, and look at all the color in this. You would think that you could just pick up something and throw it at it, and it would match because it has so many colors in it, but not so. It is so hard. Um, the, it's very hard to find even a color that looks like it will match that doesn't seem too busy with it. I like to tuck my sweaters into a skirt with the pleats. Most of them are too bulky to do that. I have to have just the right thinness. And I like to wear colored tights, but with the, all the different colors in it, it just can look garish and weird. So I still have this skirt because I am still working at it, but it is just so hard to pair things with and for me to be excited about it. So the difference between versatility and something like this is if you have a ton of items in your closet that you think are super cute but you have a hard time making an outfit of, you're limiting yourself. You're going to have a wardrobe that is hard to work with and when you go in there you're not going to be able to pull out things that you can just put on and feel good about. It's going to um, limit you when you go in there. You want to have some pieces that you have to work with but we want to do a lot of versatility. Um, speaking of versatility, um, when you think of a dress, sometimes you don't think versatile because you think of that as separates. A dress is the epitome of versatility. You put it on and it's done, said dress. Okay, here is another one. Here is a 1950s dress. It's itself all on its own, but dresses are exceedingly versatile for me because I wear, start wearing these thinner dresses in very early spring, all the way through summer and into fall. Um, like I said, this is a vintage dress, and um, here is a thrifted sweater that I will put over it, and it takes me through the colder months. You can put tights and flats with this, whatever, dress it up more warmly. A lot of versatility because I can wear this out of three seasons instead of just one. And it's another good example of splurging on the vintage item that suits my personality and I really enjoy, and then adding thrifted items to it to make it go further. Um, this is another example right here. So this is a true vintage 1960s dress, which is super cute in the in the summertime. But then here I have a, a thrifted, really cute, you see green and green, I kind of like green. Um, a thrifted corduroy jacket from Goodwill. And 
you can add this with some flats and it is so cute it's nice and toasty it'll take you through multiple seasons so lots of versatility in dresses and then thrifted items to help them go further and here is a set that I showed you in one of my other videos and it is wrinkled because it just got washed and I haven't I had the chance to iron it yet. So this is a super adorable 1940s matching set, handmade, but while it is absolutely fabulous together, it is also versatile in the fact that I can take this skirt and wear it with anything else that I would like, a button down white blouse or just whatever. And then this with its beautiful little navy blue patterning in it, this is a, a handmade a uh, skirt that I found at Goodwill, very well made, nice circle skirt, has good vintage styling, and I could put this peplum blouse over it and have a completely different look, a and it looks really lovely. So vintage and modern retro yet again paired together, high end and low end put together to make your wardrobe extend further and, uh, and be something that is more fun to mix and match with. Now price. Um, I've talked a lot about using thrifted items and pairing them with vintage. Um, you can also go all the way with retro clothing. You can buy a, a retro print dress and wear you know, a sweater that looks like a certain time period. You can go completely modern and still look vintage and you can save a lot of money by doing that. But if your heart is really with vintage, then it's good to mix and match so that you can spend your money on statement pieces that you really enjoy. Um, like this dress, this is definitely a statement piece. Not everybody's gonna want to wear this. This is a 1950s dress, has the original metal, metal studs in it, a really funky pattern, but I love it. So this is something that I would splurge on instead of buying five cheaper thrifted dresses that are nice. I would rather spend the money on something that suits my personality and I feel great in because it suits me. And then there are always those items that come along once on a blue moon and they're the kind of thing that makes you say, oh my darling, where have you been all my life? Or something like that. So here is this crazy amazing raspberry sweater set with hot pink rhinestone buttons. Now this costs more than most things that I would splurge on, but it's a once in a lifetime thing and I love it so much it makes me happy just looking at it. So it is always okay to splurge on a statement piece that feels like your personality that is going to make you happy to wear that when you see it in your closet you just smile. So there are splurges always that, that you are going to want to, to have and then there are times where you're going to want to save and you're going to want to thrift. Both of them are absolutely perfect. So we've talked about versatility, we've talked about pricing, now we are going to talk about condition. And lots of times you can find things that sometimes are labeled wounded dove or wounded bird, um, or sometimes it says as in condition. Lots of times you find them on eBay and if you, you put in on eBay a price set to where say you only look at things that are up to $25, lots of those things that are lesser priced are going to have condition issues. So you can look through them and decide if they are in a condition that you're going to pay that little amount of money and hopefully be able to fix them and have a fantastic outfit. And I personally do that all the time because I'm a cheapskate and I would rather fix something and not pay as much for it and have the money to save for those fancy splurges. Um, this little outfit is a case in point. This was hanging on the wall in a flea market just as a display. Just as a display because it was completely covered with brown age spots. I mean, it looked like somebody had just flicked brown paint at it. Um, when I asked her how much it would be, I could tell that it was going to fit me. When I asked her how much it would be, she said, oh, $3 because she didn't think that it was wearable. I didn't know, but I brought it home and I soaked it in OxyClean for three days. I kept changing out the water every spot came out. It is absolutely perfect now and it is adorable for three dollars. So super excited. This is one of those those great things where you find something that can be repaired and is so much better after you have done it. So that is a vintage bargain right there. This is another one. 
Um, it may not look like much on the hanger, but this is an absolutely adorable dress when it's put on. It's all wool, and this had some issues. I found it, and it was a good price, and I thought, what is wrong? Well, it had a couple moth bites around the bottom, which I managed to uh, patch. But this is what is so neat about it. Remember what I told you about statement pieces? Things that are unusual, that are unique to you, that make your personality seem. This has a, a uh, scarf that buttons on across here and then swirls elegantly about the shoulders. It looks so cute on. However, I told you it had moth bites around the bottom. The scarf had a good number of moth bites on the bottom part, not on the top for some reason. And you may be able to see, I don't know how much the, the camera can see, but each one of those little dots, I just very cheaply and not very well probably, put iron on black patches over each one of those moth bites so that they wouldn't get bigger and wouldn't continue. The great thing is when one puts it on over their shoulders and swirls it elegantly about, none of those patches show, which I cannot elegantly do that while I am standing here talking to you. But anyway, it swirls about. So I got something that could have been, possibly been thrown away because nobody wanted to wear something full of moth holes, but I was able to fix it and no one has ever been able to tell that it has been moth chewed. They just look at it and say, oh, what a neat, what an interesting outfit which is exactly what you want. This dress, again, is an example of that. Um, there are some light tan stainings on this side and a little bit on the back, which even I can't get out, and I'm pretty good about getting things out of vintage clothing. However, it is such a busy print that no one has ever noticed unless I have pointed it out. So I got a very, very good price on this because it was as is. She couldn't get the stains out and needed to know that it wasn't in perfect condition. So that's something I want to talk about. If you go on eBay or Etsy and you see this dress that is just absolutely amazing and you think, oh my heart, but it's $89. Yes, sometimes I actually look at those. I look at them because I just want to see it close up. I am almost definitely not going to spend that much money on it. But if I get up to it and I look at it and I see that they say it has a tear in the fabric, armpit stains, and a hole in the hem, I'm thinking $89 should be near perfect condition. So when you are buying vintage, are you paying for perfect when it's not? Always read the descriptions. The price should follow the condition. If you see something that is a low amount, generally it's gonna have an issue. If it doesn't and you get it for a super cheap price, oh my heavens, you got the bargain of the day. However, if you see something that looks amazing and has a high price, be sure that you read down through the description and make sure that they are not charging you perfect price for something that when you get it is not going to be wearable and is not going to be nice because I see it every day and it annoys me very much. So I hope that some of this has helped you. You're going to want to have those wonderful splurges of the things that just call out to you that you've been looking for forever. You're going to want to go to thrift stores and find things that you're going to add into your vintage wardrobe that are going to help it spread through the season and have more versatility. You're going to want to find um, lots of single color separates, either in pants or skirts that you can blend in lots of different things with. And just maybe you're going to want to look for some wounded doves where you can find that vintage feel that you want, but not for the price that you don't want to pay. So I hope that maybe this has helped you a little bit and you will go out there to shop and be more confident about what you are looking for and what pitfalls not to fall, fall into. Um, my next video is going to be called Fake It Till You Make It because we're going to go through a closet and we're going to look at all of the things that you might already have that you can work into a vintage look so that you can start wearing vintage inspired outfits as you start to gather true vintage. That way you can be enjoying it now without breaking your budget trying to buy all vintage items at once. And as I always say, I sure do hope that you will come and visit me on my blog. It is misssamwearsdresses.blogspot.com. That's a mouthful. But I share all kinds of things on there. I share vintage outfits, recipes, parties, and I would just love to have you come and visit me. I also have an Etsy shop and it is again Miss Sam Wears Dresses 
and uh, at the moment I have quite a bit of nightgowns and slips and all sorts of really great vintage undergarments on there. Um, I would love for you to come and see me there. Um, and I have other videos. I have videos of canning and baking and things like that. So I am just tickled that you came to visit me and I hope that you come back to see me for my next video. Bye!